guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. I am losing my voice as you can hear, but I wanted to introduce this vlog because this week I'm going to be reading a bunch of books that are out of my comfort zone. I did a little fun challenge with my friend where we both picked out books for each other to read that were my top four favorite books and her top four favorite books. We read completely different genres. I obviously read a horror and thriller. She mostly reads fantasy and fantasy romance. So the books that she picked out for me are totally different than the books I would normally read, but I'm going to be giving them a try in this video and hopefully she will get to at least one of my picks so she can tell you guys what she thinks about mine as well. We just moved into our new apartment. I love it so much. Of course, as soon as we moved in, I got COVID. That's why I sound like this, but I still want to film because I'm reading the books for this video right now and obviously I'm gonna vlog them. So before we get into the actual vlog, here's some footage of us buying the books for each other. Last night, the first book that I started was Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. I'm going to show you that B-roll from last night and then tell you a little bit about the first 25%. So last night I could not talk at all, like not even this. <laughs> I was just trying to relax, take a moment, have a bath, the self-care time that I needed. And during that, I got about 10 chapters in to the 25% mark in Stalking Jack the Ripper. And I really, really am liking it. I'm surprised because this is a historical YA mystery vibe. I don't know. I usually don't like YA thrillers. We know that. And I hate historical shit. That's the one thing I would say I'm not liking about this so far. It's just that like historical setting and writing style and the way that the characters talk to each other. I just don't love it. Okay. I'd rather read something set in modern day, but it's not bad. Honestly, I'm really enjoying it. We're following our main character who is this young girl in the 1800s. She's not supposed to be in school. She's not supposed to be interested in science. She's not supposed to be really doing any of the things that she's doing, but she's really interested in the science behind the macabre of like murder investigations of dead bodies and her uncle is a coroner and a professor at the university so he kind of like lets his niece under his wing and he lets her sit in on his classes and things like that so she's learning the things that she really wants to learn but she's limited in learning at this time period because she is a girl i really like the feminist commentary obviously um and the story is really interesting we're following her and her uncle and her love interest it's very YA romance, but you know what? I'm kind of into it. We're following those three as they try to solve the murders of Jack the Ripper, but obviously they don't know it's Jack the Ripper. They're just like 
finding his victims and studying them for science while simultaneously undergoing this murder investigation. I think our main character is really sweet. I like following from her perspective. She's like very feisty, very not like other girls, but not in an annoying way. And the romance, it's definitely YA, okay? But it's not horrible. I do really like the love interest that our main character has. I think he's like really smart. He doesn't underestimate her just because she's a woman. Like he's not like other guys in this time period either. So they're both like quirky and they're solving this murder. I already have a prediction as to who I think Jack the Ripper, like the murderer is in the story. I feel like it's really obvious. I don't know. Maybe this is gonna take like a sharp turn and I'm not gonna see it coming, but as of now, 25%. I think I know who the murderer is. Like, I think I know who Jack the Ripper is. But we'll see. Maybe I don't. I'm going to read more of this today. But right now, my plans are to run out of the house in 15 minutes. Uh, I'm supposed to go to a movie with my best friend. I think we're going to go see Smile. I've been wanting to see it for so long. But obviously, I had COVID. So I had to quarantine. My quarantine is over. So I'm very excited to get out in the world and go see a movie. And then I'm going to try to thrift some stuff uh, for the house. So we're going to go thrifting. Should be fun. Uh, but before that, I want to get some matcha in my body because I need some energy. As you can tell, I'm not like sick anymore, but I'm still like dealing with the after effects of being sick, just like the exhaustion and obviously my voice. Um, so I need some matcha, some energy in my body. And I want to tell you guys a little bit about Magic Mind Matcha. Well, I do that because they just so happen to be the sponsor of this video as well. And I'm going to be participating in their 14 day challenge throughout the filming of this video. Magic Mind is a wellness brand and this week I will be participating in their 14 day challenge by taking a matcha shot every single day to increase productivity and fight procrastination. The cool thing about this challenge is that it's working to save the rainforest. So under the hashtag 14 days of magic, we are going to be posting all about the challenge and for every 10,000 views, they're donating towards the reforest station of the Amazon rainforest. So we are literally saving the you rainforest. You can also create content if you want to be a part of the 14 day challenge, which you totally should. And I will be the judge of our creative contest in the community. The winner of my choosing will win a free Magic Mind 1 to 3 month subscription. If you want to win the contest, go ahead and participate with hashtag 14 days of magic and tag me. And the mission here is not just to save the rainforest, but also to better ourselves. There are a ton of health benefits to any Magic Mind pack. Wellness shots work because they have nootropics inside. Because of the adaptogens like ashwagandha, I think I'm saying that right, but they basically increase focus and creativity while bringing down levels of distraction. Because it has a natural source of energy, you also don't have as much of a craving for caffeine, which is great. That's really what I'm looking for. But of course, you can also make the shot in a coffee drink so you can kind of get the best of both worlds or start weaning yourself off of caffeine. Today, I just made it the way that they said to make it with uh, frothed milk. I'm excited for all of these improvements, more productivity, especially coming off of this little illness that I'm dealing with. And I'm so excited for y'all to join me in the hashtag 14 days of magic challenge. I will put the link down below and you can use my code Haley 14 for 20% off of the magic mind shots. your review 10 out of 10 but also <laughs> i'm going to have nightmares for sure
Hello vlog, it's the next day. I literally didn't talk at all yesterday in hopes that my voice would get better. And as you can tell, it really did not work. But I'm working with what I have. I sound like a frog. That's fine. I literally feel fine. That's the weird thing is everyone's like, oh my God, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I just sound crazy. But I did get to the 67% mark in Stalking Jack the Ripper. And I have to say, I do like this book. Like I am genuinely enjoying it a lot, which is a big surprise, especially for a YA mystery. There are a few things that annoy me. Like I just cannot get into the historical language. I know I said this last time, but like, scoundrel, how dare you look at the ruffles of my petticoat as I exit the archway. Like, please God, I cannot deal with that. It sounds fucking ridiculous to me. I don't know. I just, I never am into historical stuff. I don't love that part of it, but the overall story is good. I still feel like I know who the killer is, but it's an interesting mystery to watch unfold regardless. It stays pretty close to the actual Jack the Ripper case with like the letter sent to police and the Jack the Ripper wanted to like choose his own name that was used in the media. So like, I like those little things and because it's such a historical case, it doesn't feel disrespectful or like it's like too close to the victims or, or something like that. Like this is an old, old, old case from the 1800s. Like we can fictionalize it now. You know what I mean? Enough time has passed. I don't know. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion, but that's what I think. Two thirds of the way in, I don't hate it at all. I'm actually enjoying it um, other than the weird language. And the dog slander. Okay, that's another thing. There was like a dog at one point and I was living for the dog. I was like, oh my God, this cute little dog helping with a murder investigation. I'm in. And our main character was like, I just much prefer cats. Girl, what the fuck? Cats? I'm sorry, I'm not a cat person. I'm very much a dog person, specifically a chihuahua person. If that makes me annoying, I don't care. Listening to the voice like this is already probably pretty fucking annoying. So that's my stance on that. <laughs> also last night, I got some additional decorating done in here. You can see up above the bookshelves. I have like some of the stuff that I thrifted and then I also ordered some stuff on Amazon to go up there. I love it. Yeah, things are going well other than my fucking voice. <laughs> um, I'm going to go take this morning's matcha shot because I'm convinced that that contributed to my immunity. And I have one session this morning, I have an emergency session with one of my clients. I told her, I'm like, I sound crazy. I sound like a frog. Are you sure you want me to be your therapist this morning? And she's like, yes, girl, I need you. <laughs> so I'm gonna see her. And um, then I'm gonna go to church with my friend and we're gonna go to the Texas Book Festival. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it entails, but we're gonna check it out. Yo, I'm so happy. I didn't think there was gonna be anyone here that I knew, but I just met Goldie Moldovsky. And obviously I love her, y'all know that. And she was such a sweet soul. So that was so fun. And she signed a little thing that I'm gonna tape in my book for the Mary Shelley Club. And that's one of my best books of the year. Y'all, you never know. Go do things, even if you're an introvert. You might have a fun time. Said Josefina after dinner one night. I know, Mommy said, that there are many. Interesting. I might rally for my school to do it's, that. I'm a teacher. I really like it. Um, I feel like there's something I need to do. Hello vlog, 
I have not made progress in my book because after the book festival, me and Sierra came back and we watched a couple A24 movies, Bodies, 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 and Pearl. I definitely like Pearl a lot better. Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is okay though. It was really, really funny. Um, not scary at all. Um, and then I had my watch party with my queens. So I was doing a lot of watching, um, but I'm about to get back to reading. Hello vlog. I feel like my voice has gotten so much better. I am almost to normal and I really credit this ginger tea. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep sipping this while I talk, but I did wanna let you know that I finished Stalking Jack the Ripper and I'm gonna give it four stars. The first of reading the books out of my comfort zone and it's a four star like I think that's really really good I didn't think the ending was too crazy yes I didn't predict the murderer okay my prediction was wrong my theory was completely incorrect but I still like thought who ended up being the murderer was like in the realm of possibility you know I don't think it was too out of left field I think I'm just used to reading such twisty crazy thrillers that this just seemed a little like lackluster to me and i'm so used to reading like smutty crazy tension building romance that the romance just didn't do much for me either but it was entertaining and it wasn't bad like i definitely enjoyed it i thought it was crafted well like the story the characters the commentary everything was done well it's a four star it's just like not anything super super special that i would write home about which I know Bailey is gonna definitely disagree with since that's one of her favorite books that she picked for me. And the next book of her choosing that I'll be getting into is The X-Hex. The X-Hex by Erin Sterling is a Halloween romance. It's a second chance romance where this girl had like dated this guy and when they broke up she cursed him, hence The X-Hex. And now she's back giving him a second chance but she's having to deal with the curse that she put on him, her ex, hence the ex-hex. <laughs> Can you tell I don't know much about this? Um, but apparently it's like very cozy, very Halloween town vibes and the romance is super cute. So we'll see what I feel about it. I haven't heard amazing things about this one from anyone other than Bailey, but she loves this. She's a very spooky girl. She loves like Halloween town vibes. I do too. And I'm hoping because we have that in common, I'm gonna like this one just as much. I don't know. I'm going to get into it tonight and I will update you in the morning. <laughs> Hello vlog, it is the next day. I have my voice back. I'm very excited about it. I can actually talk to you guys. It's a little raspy vibes, but it's giving me like a new identity, okay? Who is she? I don't know, but I love her. And I know I'm an outfit repeater, but I just love my chunky sweater so much. And it is like a dreary, cloudy, rainy day. So I just need to be cozy. But I have a reading update for you. Actually kind of a drastic reading update because I got 50% of the way through this book last night. I just like caught a vibe and was running through it. Like, I don't know what it was. I stayed up till 1230 in the morning reading this because I just could not put it down. It was so cozy and so cute and the pages were just flipping before my eyes. The banter in this book is so funny, so adorable. It's giving me all the coziness that I needed. And then this morning, I got to the 67% mark. I am now two thirds of the way through this book in like less than 12 hours because it is so cute. Okay, I don't love the romance, I'm gonna be honest. I love our main character. I love that she's like complex, okay? She has like different issues going on with like wanting to be a witch but not wanting to be like out about it and like other people in the community that are witches don't uh, don't really know that she's a witch. She's like, all the witches are secret in this town but she's like a super secret witch. And like, it's like, why? And then she's going through this like thing with her family and with her parents who are not present and with this guy. It's just like, she is a very, interesting to me. I really like her character. The romance, eh. 
I didn't really buy it, to be honest. Like, I get that they have physical chemistry, but I don't think that it's anything more than that. Like, their previous relationship, the fact that they were, like, exes or whatever, they just, like, had a thing for three months. Like, it, it wasn't like, like, they were meant to be star-crossed lovers, soulmates who were ripped apart. Like, and that's kind of what they're acting like. So I'm like, okay, not really on board with that. But I do love our main character so much that... I really like this book. I think it's really well written and you know, I can get down with a half-baked romance. You know, it's not that fucking deep. It's just a fun, cozy book. That's how I'm thinking of it. This is not a literary masterpiece, but is it a ton of fun? Yeah. So that's where I'm at with the XX. I will definitely finish it today because I actually got the audio so I can keep listening to it. As I drive across Texas, I have quite a drive today. I'm gonna be driving two hours to go get a bunch of blood work and like scans and ultrasounds done. So it is really not gonna be a fun day for me, but I'm trying to make the best of it and like listen to my cozy, sweet little audiobook while I do this. I have a lot of health issues going on. Um, if you've watched my channel before, you've probably heard me talk about it, but yeah, I have to go do all of that, like not fun health stuff today. So hopefully to like ground me and keep me calm, I can return to the X-Hex and just have a little cozy moment in between. Uh, and it's a super long drive. So should be able to finish up the audiobook there and start maybe the next book. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not in the future. I'm right here in front of your eyes. So I will let you know. Before I head out though, gotta take my matcha shot. We in the 14 day challenge, baby. And let me tell you, I do feel the effects of it. I feel like I don't have a craving for coffee as much as I do normally, <laughs> uh, especially now that I've been drinking coffee almost every day. Uh, for the past few months because my life has just been crazy. Uh, I don't crave coffee anymore now that I've been taking these matcha shots, which is great. Uh, and I also was reading through the little list of benefits and the like adaptogens are supposed to help with mood that are in the matcha. I definitely have had a better mood, whether that's because of me coming out of the sickness or the matcha, I don't know. It's probably a combination of the two, but I am noticing those benefits. So let's go take it. And I think this time I'm gonna try to make a matcha latte with espresso um i've seen that done at coffee shops before never tried it i'm trying it today oh <laughs> oh 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 uh, 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 oh Okay, this slaps. This slaps. Oh my gosh. This is so good. This is so good. This tastes like coffee shop matcha latte. I feel fancy. Oh my gosh. And we're doing good for the planet, for the rainforest, for our bodies. Wow. Hashtag 14 day challenge. Let's fucking go. Hello, hello vlog. I'm back from my scans, it honestly wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. You know, it never is. I always just build it up in my head, but I finished the X-Hex obviously on my drive. Didn't start anything else because I didn't even know if I was gonna finish this. There was such hard rain. I was literally turning off my audiobook every five minutes trying to be like, focus on the road. But I thought the ending was really cute. It was definitely more like fantasy, like plot vibes rather than romance. This is definitely pitched as a romance. I would not say that it's that. I would call this like a fun, spooky, contemporary story with speculative elements like ghosts and witches and spells and talking cats. Um, so if that sounds good to you, then I think you would like this. If you like books like Cackle that are just like very Halloween vibes, I think you would like this. For me, I'm gonna give it 3.5. I would have given it four if there was more romance or better romance, but it just wasn't all romance. Like it was pitched to be, it was like more plot. You know what I mean? Um, and the romance just was very, it was there, but it wasn't like developed. It wasn't a slow burn. I didn't feel the tension. It was just like, okay, cute. Uh, so 3.5, not a bad book. I enjoyed it. It was cozy. It was fun, but yeah. And when I got home, my book of the month box was outside my door, if this will open. 
So I wanted to show you what I got. <laughs> Thank you. I got The Last Party by Claire McIntosh as my November book of the month. I'm so excited to read this one. So, so excited. Love Claire McIntosh. I also had a couple add-ons, of course, as always. I got Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi. This is a YA romance, but uh, this is actually a local Austin author. So really want to get into that. And then I got Other People's Houses by Abby Waxman. This is like drama central, like suburban drama. So that is my little mini book of the month haul. I also got an adorable surprise from Papier or Papier, 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 I don't know. Uh, the cutest stationery company sent me some personalized goodies. They literally say my name. I love this like paper goods vibe. This wellness journal and they knew my favorite color was green. This 2023 planner I'm definitely gonna be using. Gosh, so adorable. And all of these notepads. I love it. So thank you so much to Papier. That's my little unboxing we have. So the next book that I'm going to start is probably going to be Cinder. I don't know when I'm going to start it because I do have sessions tonight after work. Um, and before I go to my sessions, I want to try to film. My voice is going a little bit, so I don't know how much I'll be able to film, but I need to start pre-filming stuff for Vlogmas. So I definitely need to get all my November videos done. Um, going to try to film as much as possible. And then I'll let you know when I start Cinder. Hey vlog, I am home from my sessions. I just made dinner while I was talking on the phone with my <laughs> best friend who lives in Dallas. I'm literally so sad she doesn't live here. Um, I love talking to her, but now my voice is literally dead um, from chatting, chatting, chatting like two little squirrels. So I'm going to eat my food and probably watch something. I don't know what I'm going to watch yet, but that's my plan. And I'll probably start the book after. Hello vlog. It is the next morning. I've just been working away. I had a couple consultation calls, so I've just been literally at my desk all morning, but I have to say it's very nice to have an office. I feel like I can like get up, go to work, and not just like sit up in bed and start working. It is so, so nice. I feel like I have boundaries. I feel like my life is okay again. Like, I don't know, things are going well. Um, but last night, I did get to about the 25% mark in Cinder. So I wanted to update you on that. Uh, I'm not loving it. I gotta be honest. I'm not loving it. It's just not intriguing me. It's not sucking me in. This isn't a typical story that I would read. And I think I'm just like not interested by the plot. So we're following this young cyborg and she lives in this futuristic society where like androids and humans live together but she's like a combo she had this crazy accident happen to her in childhood so in order to like save her life this life-saving surgery they did was like making her into a cyborg basically and she is basically caught up in this futuristic world where there's a plague okay i'm done reading pandemic shit i mm, 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 i don't want it anymore so reading about a plague i'm like please god no and yeah she's just trying to live in this world with this plague and she's a mechanic kind of makes sense because she's you know half metal and the prince is coming to her like hey can you fix my android and so there's like the, the storyline with the plague there's the storyline with the prince and like her just being a mechanic and like having her little character development moment um but i don't love her character <laughs> uh it's very much giving like not like other girls like i'm a cyborg i'm not human and, and it's like please god give me a fucking break like i don't i just don't love it it reads very very ya i'm just not intrigued by the story i know that it's like a well-written ya book like i just know that this is not for me, I'm gonna see if I can find the audio and continue to listen to it while I work and see if I can maybe get into it if the action picks up at some point. But 
so far for a Cinderella retelling, it, it's just like a little too far off base. Like when I think of Cinderella, I want like beautiful dresses and like, yeah, there's a prince and she has like stepsisters and all that shit. But like, I want like the fantasy moment. And this is giving me way more sci-fi than fantasy. Like I was ready for my fantasy moment, but I guess this isn't it. It's not my thing initially, but I'm not going to write it off just based on the first 25%. I'm going to keep reading and I'll let you know if I have different thoughts it changes um but right now i have a little consultation coffee a local therapist in austin reached out to me and she was having some questions uh for me for my expertise <laughs> so i'm gonna go consult with her at a coffee shop and hopefully help her out and then i gotta come home and get back to work i have a lot to do today before tonight because tonight we have our tasting for our wedding like a caterer tasting to see if this caterer is going to be the one that we're going to use at our wedding so that'll be fun i can't wait to literally eat everything but <laughs> before that there's work to be done so i'm gonna go do it my little coffee date it was so nice i love meeting other therapists and it just started lately raining it is like a cloudy dreary fall day it's so perfect i have my hot chai and i'm just walking the streets I'm not walking the streets but you know what i mean i am living right now hello vlog i am now to the 33 percent mark in cinder still not loving it kind of same thoughts I'm about to go into my night sessions, but I just wanted to let you know, like we're kind of on the same track here. I kind of want to DNF it, but because this is an out of my comfort zone challenge, I'm trying to resist it. I'm trying my hardest, okay? We'll see, we'll see. vlog sorry it's loud in the background we have a temporary ac unit because our ac's out i don't know why i don't know why apartment complexes just can't get their fucking shit together but this is the reality so i'm really gonna need that matcha to kick in about now and boost my fucking mood i'm just kidding um we are home from the tasting it was so good so fun we know exactly what we're gonna eat at our wedding woohoo celebrate uh. um now I'm on sprints with the patrons. We're already having a good ass time. We gabbed for 30 minutes before we even had a sprint. So hopefully I can make some progress in this girl tonight. I told my patrons that if I'm not enjoying it by the 50% mark, I'm DNFing. Hello vlog, I had to move locations for the sprint. I'm now laying on the day bed because it is getting so late, but I'm trying to finish this book, okay? I'm not gonna DNF it. I'm not gonna do that to Bailey. I'm gonna read Bailey's favorite books, and so that's what I'm gonna do. Honestly, it's getting better the more that I read. I feel like, and I was telling my patrons this on Sprints, like, everything in YA books to me now as an adult is just, like, so heavy-handed foreshadowing that it's, like, I already know what the plot's gonna be and I'm just waiting for it and waiting for it and waiting for it. And it makes it really slow, really draggy, really boring. So that's like kind of what I'm dealing with right now with Cinder. But I do like that it's getting more like Cinderella-y. Like I like the storytelling parts that are close to like the fairy tale of Cinderella. But I'm just not, this just isn't, this is not made for me, you know what I mean? Like I'm at the 75% mark and I'm already like, I know exactly what's gonna happen in this last 25%. Let's just like hurry it up, do it, come on. Like the heavy handed foreshadowing is just like, why are you doing that? Just let it be a reveal on its own. Like why do you have to let me know what's gonna happen before it actually happens kind of thing? Like there was a reveal that it was teased around like the 20% mark and I was like, oh, okay, so this is what's gonna happen. And I was waiting for it and waiting for it and waiting for it and it wasn't actually revealed until the 50% mark. And I was like, 
okay but everybody knew that was gonna happen like this is not a shocker kind of thing i feel like if i was a lot younger like 13 14 and i read this i would be really into it but it's just like not for me now like i'm just not the audience for this book so it i don't think it's like a bad book i just think it's like not for me those are kind of my thoughts at the 75% mark, but I'm going to go ahead and finish it up tonight on sprints and I'll either give you like a tired rambly review tonight <laughs> or you'll get a coherent review in the morning. Hello vlog. Sorry if you can still hear that temporary AC unit. Um, it is so deathly loud and all my clients are getting annoyed with it. So I'm getting very annoyed with my apartment complex and I'm literally gonna go down there and be a fucking karen and raise hell because i literally waited for three months to move in and now we have no ac like this is crazy my mind's gonna explode and just burst into flames but anyway apologize for the noise um but last night on sprints it was so much fun i did end up finishing cinder the entire plot i knew what was gonna happen from like chapter six i'm not even kidding like the foreshadowing in this book was so heavy handed that was like, well, might as well not read it. Like you read the first few chapters, you know exactly how it's gonna end up. And the journey of actually getting there was more of a slog than actually enjoyable. Uh, the romance was half baked and girl, it ended on a cliffhanger. You're telling me I went through all that and there wasn't even a reveal that wasn't previously like set up or foreshadowed. like all of that for a cliffhanger like there wasn't even a twist there wasn't even a payoff no i'm not reading the second book you tried to trick me into it but i'm not going through that again two stars i know that i'm not the right audience for it so i'm not going to give it one star and like be me but eh, i just don't understand the appeal like i guess there's appeal if you're a child i know people are gonna be mad at me listen I'm sorry, I know that this book was not written for me and I'm not the target audience. If this is your childhood nostalgia book, I'm so sorry, but for me, it's my opinion, okay? We can all have different opinions. Maybe you hate the books that I like and I'm not gonna fucking get mad about it. So like, it's all fine, we can all live. Um, that's my update on Cinder. I'm about to run off to sessions. I literally have to leave in two minutes. So I'm about to run out of this house, but at some point today in between sessions, I'm hoping to start The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier. This is my last book for this video. So hopefully we end off on a bang. This is what Bailey said was her favorite book out of the four. Um, this book means a lot to her. No pressure for me to like it. <laughs> um, but yeah, this book is about this evil prince, but this prince, he like turns into a monster every night. And the like thing in the town is like, he takes a new wife every night who's supposed to like try to tame him, but it never works out. The potential wife always gets eaten by the end of the night because he's a literal monster, terrifying. Then something happens where our main character, this girly charms him with her storytelling ability. And she like tells him this rap and rapturing story throughout the night so she survives and like she continues to survive for like a thousand and a million and whatever unlimited nights. So it's a retelling of a story, like a fable or something that's like a thousand and one nights. Yeah, a retelling of a classic tale, 1001 nights. So I've never read that like story, but I'm excited to see this like fantasy kind of take on it. Just based on the description, it's giving me a curse so dark and lonely, which I don't love that. Uh, I love that concept, but not the execution. So hopefully the execution will come through on this one, but I'm not gonna know for a little bit cause I gotta go be a therapist. So I will see you later. Hello vlog, I've literally been working all day. Wednesdays are like very client heavy. I also have meetings on Wednesday. So I just have not had a lot of time to sit down and read, but I'm about to go to my last session. 
And then my best friend slash maid of honor is going to come over and we're going to have a little wine night vibe. So I don't know that I'll get any reading done today unless I read tonight after she leaves. But I don't know if I see that happening because we have a lot to catch up on. Yeah, I just wanted to say hi, check in, let you know. Uh, I also did get some editing done today in my breaks and I'm really excited for this new series that I'm going to have. Um, the like top 12 series. I think the first one should already be out. So I will link it above and below for you in case you missed it, but I'm basically going through all the thriller and horror subgenres and doing my top 12 books in each category. I think it's so much fun. I'm I'm so excited for this new series. This feels like when I started my author ranking series, which if you haven't seen those videos, I will link that playlist down below as well. But I just love starting a new series that I'm passionate about. So fun. So yeah, excited about that. Last session of the day, let's go. Then I get to drink wine. Hello vlog. I have had a very productive morning even though I look like I haven't. <laughs> I did like my whole shower self-care routine slowly, woke up late, drank my matcha. I'm being so, so productive. It is just a good morning and it's like mostly work from home until I think like four o'clock today. I have three uh, in-person things, a meeting and then two clients, but like... <sighs> until three o'clock i can just work from bed so that's wonderful i also started the wrath and the dawn on audio and y'all this is so good it is like hauntingly beautiful and fantastical like this is giving me the adult like storybook vibes it is so beautifully written and so interesting the characters are already so intriguing it's kind of giving the same vibes of A Curse So Dark and Lonely. Like it's like a little bit Beauty and the Beastie, but I really like it. It's like Disney movie on steroids, like Disney movie, but not cheesy. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'm only about 15% in, so I'm gonna do some more work, read some more of my book and uh, let you know probably around the 50% mark what I'm thinking. Hello vlog, it is much later. I'm about to head out to a meeting actually it's a meeting with my wedding planner so it's very exciting it's not work related um but before i go i wanted to give you an update about the wrap and the dawn i am 40 percent of the way through and i'm still really really loving it it is just very fantastical and it feels like a fable like i just feel like i'm in another world and there's all these like cultural elements okay so it's a fictional place called Khorasan but it's very very similar to like Southeast Asia um and like Indian culture like even just the food is like jasmine rice and saffron and they're wearing like saris and like traditional clothing like I don't know it's just like very cool I love the vibes and I totally understand why this is Bailey's favorite like this is so her as I'm reading it it's just like very very her I love our main character I'm just, I'm intrigued by the story. I'm letting myself like be taken on this little atmospheric ride. And I think this is my favorite type of fantasy when it's just like a little bit plotless. Like there's kind of like an end goal, but you're just like carried by the vibes towards the end goal. And there's a little romance involved as well. Um, it reminds me of the same kind of ride that I felt when I read The Night Circus, which is obviously my favorite fantasy book I've ever read, an easy five star. This one is feeling the same way, so bold prediction. Maybe this will be a five star, I don't know. But I've gotta to go to a meeting, so I will see you later. And I really wanna read this book, so hopefully I'll have an update for you. Hello vlog. When I got home from work, I just ate some food with Cameron. We got Whataburger and we started watching that mixology competition show. We are hoes for reality competition shows. So no matter what it is, body painting, woodworking, glass blowing, cooking, whatever. We love shows like that. So we started watching the mixology one 
we took the dogs on a walk and they had crazy zoomies as you can probably hear they're still going crazy behind me so we played with them and now i'm gonna go back to my book i am at the 65 percent mark oh my gosh the way that this cover is like shining i'm still really really liking it um it's getting a little confusing i will say it definitely requires more of my attention than any of the other books that i've read for this video uh i'm not sure if it's because it's high fantasy and i like don't know that like I've never read that before so it's requiring a lot of like attention and like I feel like I need a map I feel like I need like a character descriptions like I am not remembering who these freaking people are besides the main four people I'm gonna try to get some work done and then probably read a little bit more of this I don't know if I'll finish tonight like 35% is a lot at 11 p.m. to tackle so I don't know I'll update you in the morning where I'm at <laughs> Y'all, I am 85% in, and this is like the best last act I could have hoped for. Oh, things are so tense. <laughs> things are happening. There's action. There's romance. There's angst. There's like secrets being exposed. There's emotion. Oh, why do, I, why do I love a fantasy book? Why do I love this? Why do I love this? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hello, guys. I am finished with The Wrath of the Dawn, and y'all, this was so so good i am so surprised how much i loved a ya fantasy book like i literally never would have thought that i would like a book that's this genre this much but i don't know what it was i think it was like the angst and the tension the slow burn was really really great but it wasn't just like waiting around for romance which is kind of how cinder felt for me it was like interesting plot and story in between so i really like that i also like the cultural elements the like little magical things were so fun i just had a great time reading this there was a point and it was when i updated i literally felt compelled to update because i was like this is so good uh and it was around the 85 percent mark i was in 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 so many things were being revealed it was crazy and then the last 10%, I felt like slowed down. I feel like there was just like a, a little bit of a drag where it ramped me up and I was ready for the end. And then it just took a little bit long to get there. Like we saw 70 pages left at that point. And I was like, okay, like what? <laughs> like hurrying up a little bestie kind of thing. Uh, after it like got me all excited it just felt like it took a little bit to get there but that's my only qualm with this book like it really is my only qualm so I'm gonna go ahead and give it 4.5 out of 5 stars I know that's like being really picky but yeah it just it wasn't a five star feeling once I started feeling the drag um and I did feel that earlier in the book luckily I had the audio to kind of help me out yeah I don't know this was a perfect book but I definitely love this book a lot more than any other YA fantasy book I've ever read so that in itself is a huge achievement also I was looking at other people's reviews a lot it has a lot of great reviews which I was happy to see but a lot of reviews mentioned that the main character they thought was annoying for me I totally understood her motivations which I don't want to like fully get into because I feel like there's spoilers in there I don't know I feel like I know with thrillers and horror how much information to give without spoiling but I'm not sure like what in fantasy is a spoiler and what is not like is certain parts of the magic system spoilers it's like certain parts of the lore spoilers I have no idea I really love Shazi as a main character I thought she was so strong and I completely understood like the conflict that she had going on and her motivations on both sides of like the conflict so I don't know I, I don't think she was annoying at all which I would think that <laughs> I would be annoyed by a YA main character especially when she's like not like other girls vibes like oh I'm the one who can capture the heart of the prince like but it just wasn't like that for me and I really love the writing style as well it was just beautifully beautifully written it felt like a fairy tale and gosh this is just so good what a wonderful 
book to end on. I'm so happy that I ended up doing this little experiment. I'm going to reveal to Bailey <laughs> the fact that I actually read all the books and my ratings and we'll see what she has to say about it. I will probably post her reaction because I have to get this edited and uploaded. I will probably post her reaction either on Patreon or just in another vlog. So if you're wanting to join Patreon to see that little bit of extra content and wrap up thoughts of what she had on my favorites, uh, the link to join Patreon is always down below. But I hope you guys enjoyed seeing me kind of step outside my comfort zone a little bit. Three out of four were rated four stars or above, so I feel good about it. And thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Magic Mind down below. Subscribe to my channel and like this video if you liked it. Go to therapy and read a book this week. I think those are all my things. All right, see you guys in my next one. Bye. Oh,